I don't know what's going on this month, but for some reason, all the drama feels like something straight out of 2019. And surprisingly, the topic we're talking about today actually is from 2019. As you guys know, we've been talking about Morphe closing all their US stores and Forma ultimately filing for bankruptcy. Since this is all public information and all the documents are free for anyone to look up, we've been able to learn a lot about how much money Morphe owes and who they owe that money to. They owed money to influencers like Jaclyn Hill, James Charles, and Jeffree Star. They owed money to all of these vendors, and they even had lawsuits against them from Shelby Wilde. Shelby Wilde is a founder of Playa Beauty, and she's filed a lawsuit against Morphe for $15 million. Well, more information has come out, and it's all thanks to Jen Loves on YouTube. She's been keeping up with all the legal documents that get uploaded daily regarding this bankruptcy, and some of the information that she found is shocking, and I have a feeling Jaclyn Hill and Morphe never thought this would come out. It's a mess, so let's get into it. One of the biggest things to be revealed with this form of bankruptcy was the fact that Jaclyn doesn't own her brand. Since Forma filed for bankruptcy, it would only make sense that all the brands Forma owns would also be filing as well. For years now, Jacqueline has tried to say that she's the owner, the founder, and the CEO of her brand, but this bankruptcy revealed that's actually not true. Forma is the parent company of Jacqueline Cosmetics, which is just a nicer way of saying that they hold majority ownership over her brand, and that's why we saw Jacqueline Cosmetics also filing for bankruptcy. Now, I'm not trying to say that this is new information. We already knew that Jacqueline and Forma had a business relationship, but what we didn't know was how deep it went and how long it's gone on for. These new documents are giving us all the answers, and it's pretty shocking. In the bankruptcy filings, Morphe had to make a list of all the people they owe money to, and one of them was none other than Oxygen Development LLC. As you can see, Oxygen is listed twice, and we'll get to number 231 eventually, but right now we're going to focus on 232. It states that Morphe LLC is the party that owes Oxygen money, and Morphe is claiming they only owe them $10.70. Now, if you're thinking that you've heard of Oxygen Labs before, that's probably because you have. During the whole hairy lipstick scandal, the internet pretty much figured out that Oxygen Developments was the lab that created Jaclyn's lipsticks. People matched the lab from Jaclyn's lipstick promotion video, and they matched it to the photos on Oxygen's website, and it was an exact match. As interesting as this filing is, that alone doesn't give us much. There's no date on it, and there seems to be a mutual NDA, so whatever the contract was for, it's clear Morphe did not want anyone finding out. Unfortunately for Morphe and Jacqueline, since Forma wanted to cheap out and try and say that they only owed them $10, Oxygen came back and said, oh no, you owe us way more, and here's why. Oxygen went in and they uploaded pages and pages of receipts showing they produced Jacqueline's lipsticks. Oxygen submitted the rejection notice and wrote, The cure amount relates to purchase orders that were placed by Morphe, subsidiary of Forma, and received by Oxygen. The purchase orders attached were for the manufacturing of cosmetic products. Oxygen manufactured, supplied, and delivered the finished goods in a timely fashion. In addition, Oxygen invoiced Morphe for the completed purchase orders and delivery of goods as evidenced by the invoices attached. The debtor listed the cure amount as 1070. However, the current cure amount is currently a total of 196,000, which 170,000 is in arrears for past purchase orders that were completed and finished goods delivered, as evidenced by Exhibit A and Exhibit B. The invoices and purchase orders attached date back from April 2019, and they attached every single order receipt for all 20 of Jaclyn's lipstick shades and showed that Morphe were the ones who ordered and paid for the lipsticks. What makes this whole situation so sneaky is Jacqueline presented this brand to us as her own brand. She said the reason it took so long and kept getting delayed was because she wanted everything to be perfect. It was her own money, she was doing it on her own for the first time, and she wanted people to know that they were buying from a family business. Because it's my brand and it literally has my name on it, that I am launching a brand that I am so proud to be the owner of, I cannot even begin to tell you. But mom, you create whatever you want. You deserve to have something of your own in this line that people know, like they are buying 
into a family business when they purchase from Jacqueline Cosmetics. So at this point, I'm thinking, did Jacqueline really lie to all her fans so boldly? Or was it like a little white lie? Did she maybe pay for the packaging herself and Morphe just provided the actual lipsticks? But nope. Morphe provided the components too. At the very bottom of the order form from Oxygen, it states, Morphe provided unit carton, bottom label, and primary component already on hand. So as far as I can tell, this just looks like another Morphe product that Jacqueline slapped her name on. I haven't come across one document that actually shows Jacqueline putting her own money into this, placing any orders, or signing any of these documents. Every single thing that I've read so far is under Morphe, and let's not forget, Forma wasn't even a thing yet, so this can't be explained by Forma being the parent company. Jacqueline said that this was her brand and even tried to sell her fans a lie and make them believe they were buying into a family business. But mom, you create whatever you want. You deserve to have something of your own in this line that people know like they are buying into a family business when they purchase from Jacqueline Cosmetics. Another really interesting thing that came up in these documents was that Morphe was only being charged 96 cents per lipstick and Jacqueline was calling them luxury and selling them for 18. The idea for my brand is to create luxury products, okay, that are beautiful, amazing, feel awesome in your hands, feel expensive, but for an affordable price, which makes me so excited that you can buy three of my lipsticks for $49 because there's luxury lipsticks out there that are more than $49. I just really don't understand why Jacqueline would go ahead and lie about something so major, knowing all of this could potentially come out one day. I think her saying that Jacqueline Cosmetics was family owned makes this whole thing so much worse. A lot of people really like to support a family business because they know they don't have a huge corporation behind them and backing them. They know it's just a family trying to make it, and people rather throw their money at that than a big greedy corporation. For Jacqueline to try and tug on people's heartstrings like that, knowing Morphe was fully behind her brand, is just so icky. Jacqueline nearly got caught in this lie back when Lipstickgate was happening, and it was actually her own team that nearly leaked it. When people started to receive the bumpy, hairy lipsticks in the mail, and when beauty influencers like Raw Beauty Christie put it under a microscope and saw what they saw, people were like, uh, is this even safe to use? A creator named Cassandra Bankson actually put out a video with proof that this lab Jacqueline was suspected to be using had a long history of not passing health code tests and even having animals in their lab. Dogs and cats have been found inside of the cosmetic manufacturer's facility that Jaclyn Hill used to create her cosmetics, allegedly. So as you know, I found hairs, again, 99.9% .9 positive they're animal. The only 0.1% that I am not positive is because I don't want to be sued. There has been a lot of complaints. There, there have been some complaints from the FDA. Again, the Food and Drug Administration investigated in, I believe it was 2011 or 2012. I again found this off of a Twitter account and then I went to the FDA government website to confirm this. And it looks like there were some issues about this specific development place not meeting quality control. So at this point, Jacqueline was scrambling and she apparently sent these lipsticks off to be tested. And when she got the results back, she wanted to prove everyone wrong and tweeted, we want to assure everyone that So Rich lipsticks are safe. If you would like to review the results of our recent safety tests, you can view the PDFs here. And a lot of the information was blacked out, but whoever went in and did the blacking out missed a really important word. They half blacked out that the customer who ordered these tests were actually Morphe. Tons of people were calling them out on this, and Insider actually reported on it, writing, Jacqueline Hill released documents to prove she tested her lipsticks for safety, but people think they show her company may be owned by another beauty brand. And when Insider reached out for comment about why it said Morphe, this is what the rep had to say. The appearance of Morphe on the document was an error, likely resulting from the fact that Jaclyn Cosmetics' strategic and financial partner, Elevate Brand Partners, also works with Morphe, a spokesperson for Jaclyn Cosmetics told Insider. The spokesperson also said that Jaclyn owns Jaclyn Cosmetics. Whereas all these documents, all these order numbers and receipts from Oxygen state otherwise. If that was the case, Oxygen would be going after Jaclyn right now not after Morphe. One thing that Jacqueline actually didn't lie about was how fresh her lipsticks were. 
a lot of people thought that maybe these lipsticks were sitting around in a warehouse collecting dust and growing fuzzy particles, but Jacqueline said that wasn't true. So number one, let's start with the expired accusation. My lipsticks did not go into mass production until the same month that I actually launched my brand. It was only a couple weeks before, a couple weeks prior to my launch that we started actual mass production. Although I had been so in depth with my formulation, my colors, and approving all of that, mass production did not go into production until right before my launch because we wanted them to be fresh. We didn't want them to sit on shelves. And it looks like Jacqueline was really telling the truth. Jen went through the order summary and created this whole timeline of the lipsticks from order date to shipping date. It looks like Jacqueline ordered her lipsticks or Morphe ordered the lipsticks because Morphe was the one paying for them on April 2nd of 2019. Jacqueline in her My Lipsticks video where she talked about all the issues flashed this document. This was done at the lab, okay, at Oxygen. That's where this was done. The dates on this are May 15th and May 16th. I looked up and found out that the launch date is May 30th for these lipsticks. We look on the invoices where Oxygen is disputing how much Forma owes them. These different invoices show when the product was shipped and how much was owed. The dates on these lipsticks being shipped are between May 20th and May 25th. So starting on May 20th, going to the 25th, they have batches of these lipsticks getting on a truck and driving from California to Florida. And if you're not familiar with the geography of the United States, that is literally the opposite side of our very giant country. Jacqueline put up her lipstick reveal video on May 23rd of 2019, and she said it would be officially launching on May 30th. The lipsticks in the video looked really good. They were creamy, obviously Jacqueline didn't notice anything wrong with them, and her fans were really excited. Here's where things get interesting. Jen put two and two together, and she realized there's a pretty good chance Jacqueline didn't have a single lipstick from the batch that customers would be getting, and her PR box was probably a completely different batch. So that means when Jacqueline launched her video, chances are not a single lipstick was in the distribution center. So how did she get the PR package that she shows in that video? They had to have been a different batch. They were not the same lipsticks. They were not from the same batch as the ones the customer got. When you really think about it, this whole timeline seems way too fast. From Morphe placing the order on April 2nd to shipping the products by May 20th, that's only a little over a month to source the materials, make thousands of lipsticks, package them, quality check them, and then ship them across the country Country ready to launch. Jacqueline literally took years to finally launch these lipsticks, and I have no idea why she would rush probably the most important step. The last thing I want to talk about actually has to do with Forma. Remember earlier when I showed you that document from Forma's bankruptcy that listed Oxygen twice? One that was listed with Morphe, which we now know to be Jacqueline's lipsticks, and another one that was listed as... Forma Beauty Brands LLC Manufacturing and Supply Agreement. It turns out, even after Morphe knew this lab obviously was having some issues, after Jacqueline completely trashed the lab, that is what you are experiencing, our little white cotton fibers coming off of their gloves, and it is so beyond unacceptable. After people found animal hairs in their lipsticks, Morphe still went and created highlighter sticks and a bunch of other products with them. So they came out with these highlight sticks in October, right? The Jacqueline lipsticks launched in June. So they had July, August, September, October, four months from when Jacqueline's lipsticks were all hairy and then they're coming out with highlighter sticks from the same lab knowing that it's a contaminated lab? What? Were our outstanding from Morphe are from 2021 and 2022. Let's just give Morphe the benefit of the doubt. So let's say they find out Jacqueline's lipsticks, they're all hairy and contaminated and awful. And they're like, oh crap, we can't work with this company anymore. We can't work with this lab anymore. We're going to take our business elsewhere. So they go to another lab and then four months later, they pop out some highlighter sticks with a different lab. And then two years later, they're like, well, it's been a little while. You know, they've cleaned up their act. We're going to go back to what's it called? Oxygen. We're going to go back to oxygen. See, to me, that doesn't make any sense. 
which makes me believe the reason Morphe and Oxygen probably agreed to a mutual non-disclosure agreement for Jacqueline's lipsticks was probably because they both didn't want people to know. The lab probably didn't want the hairy lipsticks to be attached to them, and Jacqueline didn't want us to know that Morphe was footing the bill for this. She wanted us to all think that it was a nice, family-run business backed by her hard-earned money on YouTube. So yeah, it's crazy that all of this is coming out so many years later, but it finally feels like we're getting real answers to such a huge situation that never really had any closure. Once again, thank you so much to Jen Loves for digging and finding all this information because let me tell you guys, I tried to go through all these documents and it was giving me a headache. There's like hundreds and hundreds of pages uploaded to this portal and Jen went through every single one of them and found the most important information. I'm gonna have all of Jen's information linked down below, so make sure you guys go and check out her video. She has two videos right now. One is a main video about the lipsticks and everything that we just broke down, but she goes into a lot of detail. And she also has a live stream where she goes over her thoughts and theories about everything, and it's really interesting to listen to. I'm gonna have both videos linked down below, so make sure you guys go check her out and let her know I sent you. Anyways guys, let me know what you think about everything down below. Are you shocked that Jacqueline seems to have lied about all of this from being a family-owned business and her being the sole owner of her brand? Or did you have a feeling this was the case all along? Let me know and I'll see you next time.